Welcome to my lecture online. Now that we understand how to calculate the divergence in spherical coordinates, let's apply this to the divergence theorem. So here, what we're going to do is take the integral of the divergence over a volume, in this case, over a sphere of radius r, and we know that that should be equal to the vector function multiplied times a surface element, and then multiplying, or not multiplying, but then integrating over the entire surface of that sphere with radius r. So that's what we know as the divergence theorem. The, the, the divergence integrated over the volume should equal the, the vector function integrated over the surface of that volume. All right, so we go back to what we did on the last time. We ended up with a vector function equals r squared in the, in the r unit vector direction. Then we take the divergence of that, which we did in the last video, which was equal to 4r. So now we're going to integrate that over the volume. So let's start with that first. We're going to integrate the divergence of the vector v, which is 4r, times the volume element, which is r squared sine of theta dr d theta d phi. Of course, we're going to integrate that from 0 to r. So let's see here. In this case, we note that the r is going to be a constant. r doesn't change. Oh, wait a minute. No, no, we need, no, we need to integrate over. That's right. It's not a constant in this case because we're integrating over the entire volume. So definitely not a constant. 4 is a constant. So we can write this as 4 times the integral from 0 to r of r cubed dr times the integral of the sine of theta d theta, and that's going to be from 0 to pi, because it's going to go from the z-axis to the negative z-axis, 180 degrees, times the integral of d phi integrated from 0 to 2 pi, because we go all the way around the circle in the direction of phi. All right, so these are nicely spaced separately, so we can integrate those together. So this is equal to 4 times, that will be r to the fourth over four evaluated from zero to r times the integral here. The integral of the sine is the negative cosine, negative cosine of theta evaluated from zero to pi. And then we multiply that times the integral of phi evaluated or integral d phi, which is phi evaluated from zero to two pi. So let's go ahead and evaluate all that. First of all, this four cancels out with that four. So this is equal to um, r, the radius of the circle to the fourth power. This here is, um, let's see here, we multiply the times so when we plug in the upper limit, we get minus one, no, minus times a minus one, which is plus one, minus, when we plug in the lower limit, a minus one, like this, times two pi. So this will be two times two pi, which is four pi times r to the fourth. Four pi r to the fourth, which is the integral of the divergence over the volume of the circle with radius r. That should equal the surface integral of v dot dA. So let's see if that's the case. So here we're going to integrate the surface integral of v, which is right here, r squared times r unit vector multiplied via the dot product times the area element. Now the area element is going to be r squared times the sine of theta. And since we're only over the surface, we're not varying in the radius, we only get d theta d phi. So we only have to integrate it twice over theta and phi. In this case, r is indeed a constant because I'm integrating over the surface. r will be equal to the radius of the circle, which is equal to r. So here we have r squared times r. Notice that because of the dot product, the unit vector, oh, wait a minute, I'm, I'm missing something here. This is an area element, and the area element is the unit vector poking out of the area, and it's a sphere, so the unit vector is going to be r unit vector. So we have the dot product, r unit vector dotted with r unit vector is equal to one. So this becomes equal to r squared times r squared, which r to the fourth. We can take that outside integral sign, because it's a constant, times the integral of, here we have the sine of theta, d theta, the sine of theta, d theta and the integral of d phi and the integral limits are from 0 to pi and from 0 to 2 pi so it looks exactly the same as what we have over there we have r to the fourth already so this is equal to r to the fourth times this will be the negative cosine of theta evaluated from 0 to pi 
and this will be phi evaluated from 0 to 2 pi. So this was equal to 2, that's equal to 2 pi, that's 4 pi times r to the fourth, 4 pi r to the fourth. So you can see that both answers are indeed the same. And so we've just shown, again, it even in spherical coordinates, that the divergence theorem holds. Of course, it should hold. Now that said, we're going to show you an example where the divergence theorem appears not to hold. And that's interesting because divergence theorem should always be correct in any situation. Well, not quite any situation. And so we'll ex explore that, I think, on the next video. And then we'll see why there may be a difference, why that may not always be the case. And then we have to figure out why that's not always the case. And then we're going to end up with something called the Dirac Delta Function to explain why that is so. So stay tuned and we have some more interesting interesting adventures here for you using the divergence theorem. So stay tuned.